Greetings. Now that I have my final sights for my fire observation towers, I, I'm going to try to figure out which ones of these bits, these dark blue areas, which are the final sights. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on a hill shade so we can get a bit better of an idea of what this looks like. Let's turn on that hill shade and then also let's go ahead and turn on some hydro and some roads. Now there's a lot of little pieces in here, right? And I don't want to have a piece that's say, let's go ahead and zoom in on a couple of these things. This is a final observation possible site, but let's go ahead and measure that to see how how long it is actually across. So let's measure it across in meters. Let's go ahead and measure that. That's only 36 meters across. Maybe I want a fair chunk of land that meets these criteria. So how can I do that? Well, in my final sites layer, what I can do is I've already added a field over here on the right side, and I've called it area. And I made it a floating point. I'm going to go ahead and calculate the geometry. And I'm going to use that, and I'm going to figure out, OK, based on the coordinate system of the data source, which is NAD83, UTM, zone 14, I'm going to calculate it in, how about square meters? That, that sounds good, square meters. And I'm going to say OK here. And it's going to warn me, hey, you're, you're calculating outside of an edit session. But I know that, no worries. Uh, it's just warning me that I can't undo that. So I'm going to now sort that on the area. And now I've got a 17,000 square meter area. And let's say I want all of the ones that I want to consider are above 10,000 square meters. So what is that, 100 meters on each side? So I'm going to look at those. All right, great. Now I've selected those. And then I'm going to now, and I can see one in the, in the map view right there. But I'm going to zoom to the selected uh, features. So I'm going to zoom to select it. I'm going to turn off some of these other things because they're sort of getting in the way of my, my visual analysis here. So I'm going to leave the final sites on and my hydro and my roads. So these are the polygons that actually meet the criteria. They are large enough and contiguous enough where there are going to be possibilities for my, for my sites. Now I'm going to go ahead and Go ahead and turn on the digital ortho photo quad here and turn off the hill shade. I'm also going to do what we did a couple of uh, videos ago, and that is, you know, I have access to the world imagery base map here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. So now I'm going to stream some data in from ArcGIS Online, right? I'm not confined to just air data on my desktop here anymore. This is the beauty of the online platform. And so now I'm streaming this layer in from the online environment, and I'm looking here at these sites as my final, what do I have, six? Let's go ahead and look at the table again. Open attribute table, I've got eight. I've got eight of them selected. Oh, I, I see, I've got a couple that are, that are adjacent here. So if I wanted to investigate each one of these sites at a bit larger scale, all I have to do is zoom in here, and it's going to stream that data in from ArcGIS Online, allowing me to investigate that a bit further. Again, the beauty of the, the online platform. So these are two of the possible sites here for my wildfire observation towers. Uh, they're high ground. They're on flattish ground, less than 5 degrees of slope. They're on pasture or hay land use. They're close to roads, and they're close to hydro features. So those are two that meet the criteria. They're over 100 meters square. and. So you can see that we're taking advantage of desktop tools. We're also using online data that's coming in. And let's say we wanted to look at the topo map, speaking of online data. We've got uh, the ability to look at the world topo map here as well. So let's go ahead and, and uh, change that so we've got the topo map. And let's also look at the digital raster graphic as well. So we've got USA topo maps streaming in here from the cloud. Let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. So now we see the topo map. And let's go ahead and turn back on our final sites. So there's our final sites in this particular uh, view with the topo map behind it. And we can pan over to our other places that met the criteria as well. And that would be right down here where I'm panning uh, next to this railroad track. So that's, those are the final sites. We've looked at a lot of different things in this series of videos. But I hope from these series of videos, you see that raster analysis with vector analysis combined 
is really quite powerful and doable and easy to use. And number two, we've got desktop tools, but we also have the online platform. And the last thing to close the circle on that is that if I wanted to publish now this final site's UTM, all I would have to do is I could say share as a service, okay, and then I could publish this layer up to ArcGIS Online. Let's say I have, let's say I have stakeholders that are out there or Western Iowa and Eastern Nebraska and that want to look at my possible final sites. Maybe they don't have any GIS software, but they do have a web connection. I could publish this to ArcGIS Online, give them access to it, and they could look at it in a web browser. So we've got a lot of possibilities right here at your fingertips. Thanks.